So the Apple Vision Pro has released and it is turning a lot of heads for various reasons. But is it the brand new, industry leading, first generation virtual reality headset that we was all promised? Uh... Well. So the Apple Vision Pro was announced about seven or eight months ago and it made a lot of headlines because it was the first first generation product that Apple released in a long time. And they are going head to head with things like the MetaQuest. Now there is a massive price difference here because the MetaQuest, even the latest one, the MetaQuest 3, will set you back around $500. Whereas the Apple Vision Pro is coming in at an eye-watering three and a half thousand dollars. But is it worth it? Well, there's some big differences between the Apple Vision Pro and the MetaQuest. For starters, the Apple Vision Pro doesn't come with any joysticks. You don't need to hold anything while you're using it. It just comes with the headset and some accessories like the battery and stuff that you actually need to make the headset work. But the MetaQuest needs joysticks in order to make it run. Now, the difference here is that the MetaQuest and loads of other virtual reality headsets are all geared towards the gaming industry and using it for gaming, watching movies, all that sort of thing. Whereas the, the Apple Vision Pro is going towards its strong point, which is Apple's ecosystem. And there are really two big things about the Apple Vision Pro. Number one is the ecosystem. Now, as with all Apple products, once you put on the Apple Vision Pro, it has loads of tech specs, which I'll get into in a minute. But I just want to talk about the ecosystem, the way that it works, which it does completely differently to any other product that's out there. So with, when you get your Apple Vision Pro on, when you connect it for the first time, you will sign in with your Apple ID, and then it will automatically have all of your photos, all of your contacts, everything that's on your Apple Cloud and everything that's in your Apple account and that's on your iPhone, you can now get on the Apple Vision Pro and you can use it inside the headset. Another really cool thing about it is that when you've got a MacBook, if you sit down with your MacBook in front of you and you, it will have a little uh, VR button in front of you that will appear in virtual reality space on your headset that will tell you to connect to your MacBook Pro. It will then, once you've connected, it will turn off the MacBook Pro display screen and then the display screen will appear in front of you and you can open multiple windows and have all these big massive windows open in 3D space that you can use. Now imagine that for something like video editing. We've already been told that the MacBook Pro has DaVinci Resolve. So imagine if you're using DaVinci Resolve or even Final Cut Pro to edit your videos and you can do it in the Vision Pro with this massive screen in front of you. That is something I think would actually be really cool. You can also connect your AirPods. They've already got speakers built into them, but you can connect your AirPods to it to use as the uh, audio device for the head for the headset. So the, the connectability and the ecosystem is a massive strength that Apple are playing to and they're leaning into it, which they should do really because they already have a really, really strong ecosystem. Now, the other thing that's really good about the Vision Pro is FaceTime. Now, this depends on really everybody having a Vision Pro and that means that everybody's got to shell out three and a half thousand dollars to get one. But FaceTime works just as well without it. So if you're talking to people with iPhones and then you have a Vision Pro, you'll get these windows that pop up in front of you and you can talk to them on FaceTime and it, that looks really good, but it works even better if all of you have got the Vision Pro. Now we saw this recently with Marcus Brownlee, iJustine and Brian Tong all doing a virtual reality FaceTime, all, all of them having the Vision Pro and talking on it. Now it does look very over the top and very uncanny valley and CGI and you can tell it's fake. It's meant to look real, but it, it's, it just looks a little bit too fake. And as they said in the video, if you have something like hair, like long hair, and then you, when you scan yourself, your hair will be frozen in time. It will be like a block. It won't wave, it won't be free flowing. So there are issues with it, but it does work really well. For example, if you lean and talk to one person, that person will see you looking directly at them, whereas the other person on the call will see you looking at the side of your face. Now we need to remember this is a first generation product, so it's not going to be groundbreaking, it's not going to be amazing, it's not going to be absolutely perfect. When we vision something like this, we envision a pair of sunglasses like the new Meta Ray-Bans that have come out. We imagine them with a 24-hour battery life that can do everything that the Vision Pro can and more. But that sort of thing is years away. It is not yet, but this is a first stepping stone into that direction. It's not It's not compatible for most people. It's too expensive. It's absolutely huge. It's only got a two-hour battery life. 
It's still got loads of issues and features that don't work properly on it. So it's not going to be realistic for most people to get it or practical for most people to get it. It's more of a novelty. If you want to be someone that's going to have a first generation product that you can show to your kids and grandkids in 20 years time when they're all walking around with sunglasses or implants in the back of their neck and you're walking around with these huge goggles going, look, this was the first generation Apple Vision Pro from 2024. That's what you can get it for. But other than that, I wouldn't really say it's worth getting. It's more just a novelty of having the first generation product. So the tech specs for the Apple Vision Pro are actually pretty impressive. It starts off with 256 gigabytes, and that is the entry level for the $3,500 price point. And then it goes up to one terabyte for the $3,900. That's the maximum you can get. It has 23 million pixels on a micro OLED display for each eye. So literally for each eye, you'll have a micro OLED display with 23 million pixels because, because it's so close to your eyes, they don't want you to be able to see anything. So it's much sharper than the Apple Retina display. It has 92% DCI P3 color accuracy and it is 90 up to 100 Hertz refresh rates. Pretty impressive. Now it's powered by the M2 chip. Now the M2 chip powers all of the software such as the Vision OS and everything to do with the software that's on the Vision, Apple Vision Pro device. And then the R1 chip powers all of the cameras, the sensors, the LiDAR sensors, all the drivers is powered by the R1 chip. So it has two powerful chips in this to power two different sides of the Apple Vision Pro. So the cameras, it has a stereoscopic 3D main camera system, a spatial photo and video capture, an 18 millimeter f2.0 aperture lens and a 6.5 stereo megapixels. Now the sensors it has, it has two higher resolution main cameras, six world facing tracking cameras, four eye tracking cameras, a true depth camera, a LiDAR scanner, an IMU, a flicker sensor and an ambient light sensor. So it has a lot of sensors. This is why it's coming in at such a higher price point because of all of these sensors that's thrown in it. Now it only has a two to three hour battery life, which is powered by a battery pack, which is attached to it. Now you can't turn this on by just putting it on your head and it has an on button. It doesn't have an on button. You literally put it on your head. You have a, wire, a battery that's wired that you clip onto it. And that is the only way once it clips on and it uh, locks into place, that is the only way to turn it on. And then you're supposed to have the battery pack in your pocket now if you want to use have it, use it and have eternal battery that's going to last forever then you can plug the battery pack into a power socket and plug it into the wall that's how you can use it if you want to use it long term so if you're sitting at your desk and you want to do some video editing or whatever and you're using your macbook pro you can plug the battery onto the headset then plug it into a external power source and plug that directly into the wall if you're just sitting there but i wouldn't recommend that if you're moving around because you're going to end up pulling it off your head now i'm not going to be spending three and a half thousand dollars on getting this i don't really see the need for it but if you want to get the very first generation product then it might be a worthy investment for you to keep as the years go on Much much like people who have the very, very first iPhone that was released or the very first iPod that was released. It's one of those things that's going to go down in history as Apple's first big step into virtual reality. So if you want to be a part of history, it's worth getting. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below whether you're going to be getting it or not. But for me, there's much better ways I could be spending three and a half thousand dollars. If you want to know a much better way to spend that sort of money and you'll even have some money left over at the end, go and watch this video next to get this.